Okay, so we're now on our fourth uh, lockdown exercise vlog uh, interview thing and I'm here with Murray and Hello. we're going to talk about life and stuff and apologies in advance, we're about to walk up a steep hill so I may start panting. Oh, this is so much steep. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, well, we'll be fine. So what have you been doing to keep sane during this lockdown? Oh, you know what, Cameron? I, I've been having trouble keeping sane during this <laughs> lockdown. I, I think this one is much worse than the first because I was working during the first. Whereas this time, oh, it's yeah, really yeah. just like university work. It's, you know, a bit of... There's not much going on. I'm just no. stuck at home working on the same things and I'm going a little bit uh, insane at the moment. I think the... To be honest, one of the things I find is the whole... Um, not having an exit. I think we'll go that way. Yeah, let's go this way. Looks less steep. We're, um, we're in new terrain here. I have no <laughs> idea what we're doing. So yeah, no, I think for me as well, like, uh, the lack of kind of deadline for this, like, there's no like, we'll be done. This lockdown by day X. It's just yeah. like, we are in a lockdown. Yeah. That's it. And I'm like, it's kind of tough because you're like, you've not really got much to like aim for. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it is definitely tougher this time around. Uh, I think I remember back in March last year, um, you know, we're coming around to the anniversary now, but yeah, most people were thinking, oh, this will be temporary, it'll be three weeks, it'll be nothing, you know? Well, yeah, that's, a, that's kind of where I was as well. Yeah. I remember being like, oh, yeah, by uh, October, yeah, well, surely. Uh, October 2020, everything will be completely back to normal. Yeah, I wasn't anticipating it to last this long. <laughs> yeah, no, because we had a gig uh, scheduled for October. And That's I remember right, going, yeah. I'll be fine. I was like, we had a gig in May. I was like, well, that probably won't happen, to be honest. But I was like, surely the one in October, that'll be fine. Yeah, here we are. I remember pinging up on my phone when we were supposed to have it on the day. I just thought, oh, wow. I know, it's what were we thinking? So it's one of these ones that... I mean, the good thing is, I don't know if you saw, they're uh, hoping to get all adults vaccinated by uh, the, I think it's the 31st of July. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did see that. So I think it's quite optimistic. I can, yeah, I'm like, I trust Boris Johnson as much as I can throw him. Uh -huh. But if we hold him to his word, mm -hmm. that's a good sign. Okay, yeah. so we're back. The sun got very bright there, so I have to kind of re, re expose the camera. Uh, so, have you been listening to any bands? Too many bands? Anybody new Actually over not. lockdown? Um, anyone new? Not really anyone new. I've been visiting kind of old, older artists that I you know, gave maybe a first listen to a while back, but not really, yeah. didn't really get into. I think... Who like? Uh, well, I think like the one I've been listening to the most recently is George Duke, who passed away a few years ago now. Okay. He was a big kind of jazz, funk yeah. uh, artist. Um, and some of his stuff is really, really good. Uh, did he work with anybody notable? I really don't know much about kind of the jazz or funk world. Oh, I mean, George Duke worked with a hell of a lot of people. I honestly couldn't list them. Okay, yeah. Um, but I, I, I think George Duke's kind of performances really expose something that I like the most about music is the kind of performance aspect, something that has really been sorely missed during lockdown. He's, yeah, was he very kind of a... I mean, I can imagine he was very much a live musician. Like yeah, his, yeah, uh, definitely. He, kind he, he did do like uh, what's it called session musician. Yeah, he he did do session kind of stuff, but his live stuff is really really good. He he is such a kind of crowdsman. Yeah. Also, apologies to anybody for the camera work. I'm currently know, trying what, not to die. Where are we going? <laughs> Walking down a really steep hill holding the camera. So I led you here, Cameron, but I have no it's idea. Fine, where we we're are. fine. We're now at, uh, we're not very far from the flat again. So yeah. You know well, how I said let's go that other way. Yeah, because we're oh, it now we're too bad. now we're back to where we oh, where yeah. we said we weren't gonna go. So. Okay. I'm I just, guess we'll just continue along this way and it'll be fine. Okay, I've got the script back up. So, what are you most excited for once this lockdown finishes? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. I think really just for life to begin or to restart again. I feel like just sitting in my flat the whole time, like it's been stalling and then just waiting. Well, delayed. yeah, it, it kind of feels, to be brutally honest, it kind of feels like Groundhog Day. I don't know if it feels like that for you. Like, more or less every day is the same. Yeah, <laughs> I wake up the same, I am tired the same, Yeah, I it, it's the same day every day and it doesn't help that there isn't too much to break that up. Yeah, um, do I go left here? Yeah, we go. If okay. we go this way then, we'll end up 
somewhere <laughs> somewhere sensible somewhere we know yeah and hopefully not back up in another mental health uh, yeah that, uh, <laughs> didn't go quite uh, so well don't, don't talk too soon it's um fun. but yeah no i mean also people get a nice piece of swan yeah yeah, it's quite nice right here. I've actually not walked this exact route before. I've, mm. I've drive past it quite a lot. It's actually really pretty. So, what is your favourite venue to play? Favourite venue? I, I, I've, wa I've watched few, I've watched a lot of them before, and yeah, I, I think a lot of people have said Opium. Yeah, it's kind uh, of been that running. Opium, great stage. Uh, which is a big stage, and you know, I don't. As, as a drummer, I end up kind of just inhabiting whatever space I'm given. The yeah, dr drum kits are big. They have to inhabit a lot of space, but. You know, if we want to get everyone in front, I usually just have to squidge in <laughs> yeah. as far back as I can. I, I think I remember there was a gig in Glasgow. Yep. Uh, was it Door 2? Room 2. Room 2, that's it. Was there. Um, yeah, that was there. And I, I was like crushed against this back LED panel wall. Oh, yeah. it's, it's something else. No, uh, um, it was a... Uh, I do recall that being a pretty interesting gig to say yeah. the least, because the speaker system was so bad. Oh, yeah. It was, I, I mean, <laughs> I would say that the tech on the stage probably out, out, out space. Yeah, them. remember they had, like these, they had like these giant cone things that were... It was a really weird looking PA system. Yeah. And it just sounded so bad. I, 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 I quite enjoyed the kind of space. It, it yeah, it was a, nice a cool space. space. Was, um, but yeah, like as a drummer, I was crushed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but like, that, that was fun. But um, was it the little red room? Where, we where Red we Bar. Played? We Red Bar with, uh, with Ross, Ross Arthur. Arthur. Yeah, that I was a good I really one. liked that venue. Mainly because there was so much space. And the sound was actually really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I'd be uncomfortable because there's no stage. But it was yeah. actually quite cool. Um, I didn't like that... It was like, it, as an audience member, you can't really see anything if you're up the back. Yeah. That's because true. there's no stage. But to be honest, it was a pretty cool venue. Um, it was. And if you get a lot of people in there, they're... And as I said, to be honest, that was the best live sound oh, yeah, I've had yeah. in a while. Yeah. Uh, maybe Opium was better, but that was still a, a really, really good sound. Do you want to go straight or right here? So if we go uh, right, cool. That's then yeah, because right we can go around the on you, yeah, we can go around the water. Um, so out of our songs, what is your favourite to play live? Oh, play live. I think out, out of all the ones, even to play in practice, Trigger is my favourite. Yeah, Trigger That's, is really fun. Yeah, it 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 it. I I don't mean this in a kind of horrible way or whatever, but like Trigger is simple enough that there's a lot of room to play with. Yeah, I have uh, to admit, yeah. When we play it? You're, um, I actually didn't really listen to your drum parts until I was mixing it. Yeah. Yeah, there's some really cool kick stuff you do. Uh, we never really hear it in rehearsals because your, your drums aren't mic'd up, so you can't mm. really hear the kick drum. But yeah, it kind of works because there's nothing else really complicated going on. Mm -hmm. So you have the kind of space to do what you like. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think as well, like, because it, Trigger doesn't come from 93, it comes from Missile Brook of Law. Actually, but not, technically, Butterflies and Dragons. Butterflies and Dragons. Me and Hamish oh. kind of worked on it initially, and it was just before the band broke up, so we didn't actually get a chance to record it. Mm -hmm. And then we re, re, vi re revived it for uh, Missile Brook of Law. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I mean, our, it's definitely, our version is my favourite by far. Yeah, I, I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a different song almost. Yeah. It's very, very different. Um, and I think, I don't know, it's a weird one because we've been playing it since the start as well. And yeah, and it's, we've never got bored of it, to be honest. I would never say I'm like, oh God, here comes Trigger. Like, No, definitely not. So, out, moving on from that, what is your favourite song of ours in general? If you're just wanting to put one on to listen to. I mean, to listen to Fade Away, coming back to that again, yeah. but for a lot of the same reasons as before. I think it's a nice, well-rounded song. Um, it's like, it's, there's repetition in there, but not so much that you just get tired of it or that yeah. it's stuff in Europe in a bad way. Um, I, I like it for those reasons. Yeah, no, I would say the same. It's a, it's a, it's a very catchy song. So, it's quite good. What are you working on musically at the moment? Musically? Oh, I, I've got to admit, nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, it must I, be quite hard because you've not got a drum kit at your flat, don't you? I, I have one, but it's in a cupboard and I cannot play it in my flat. Yeah, yeah you're in it, quite a residential area. Very, very residential area. Um, and it is frustrating, I'd like to go and play it. I, I bought a kind of beat pad style thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, it was, it's it's been good. It's good for like sketching out ideas and doing rudiments yeah, yeah. and stuff. And oh, we're going around the gate. Yeah, we're just going to just do this again. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool to use and fun to play with. You can put samples on it, you can use trigger stuff. But it's no standing for a drum kit. No, I can imagine. 
it's hard to make myself kind of motivated to yeah. use it as an absolute standard. We just need to write more electronic drum parts and like synth <laughs> exactly. drums and stuff. No. But I mean, something I've been toying with is learning another instrument. Yeah. I think drums are really nice, but they don't give you the same ability to communicate musical ideas like piano yeah. does or a guitar does. One of the reasons I'd like to learn a keyboard or something along those lines is because I've, had, I've been seeing a lot of people playing both drums at, and keyboard at the same time, like in a hybrid. Yeah, system, yeah. Like, I don't know if that's something that kind of gets served to you. Like, I mean, I know that, um, I know Neil Park was famously, he would like play marim marimba and stuff as <laughs> yeah. well. Like, he had, well, he had the whole percussion section of a orchestra, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Okay, and we're back. Sorry, we had a massive gust of wind that completely <laughs> I know. killed the mic, but we're fine. Uh, we're back now. And so are you working on anything outside of music at the moment? Outside of music? Man, th this comes back to that I'm going insane uh, in my <laughs> flat. Like, um, there's been quite little to do recently. I think the, the main big thing during lockdown is that last year uh, I got a hamster. Oh yeah, Harold? And, yeah, Harold the hamster. Who knows, maybe we'll insert like a video right here and give Cameron some editing work to do. I mean, if you give me a photo of Harold, I will drop Harold in right now and oh, he'll great. be... Great. So we can... You can all see Harold right now. He's very cute. <laughs> right, Murray, please send me a photo or this will be a really awkward <laughs> segment. Yeah. Um, no, but like... It's been really fun having an animal um, and you know, growing attached to it. Yeah. And a big project for us has been building a cage for um, a oh, have you, so, wait, so you, have you, by, by building do you mean actually like building or just like getting parts and kind of filling it out? Well the first cage was like an actual built cage. It was, oh, yeah. We used um, like storage boxes and we cut out bits mm -hmm. put in like kind of grating I guess. Yeah. Uh, that we'd taken from an old hamster cage that was just part of it. a bit too small. Yeah. And we kind of made a stack thing with like ladders and everything. Oh wow. Great. Um, but hamsters also need a lot of run space and we didn't really have that. So recently we built them a, built them a more proper one. Oh wow. Uh, like the IKEA Dettol, which yeah. is like this glass shelving solution. Yeah. Um, that thing that thing is commonly used for hamster pages and oh, so that's what okay. we got and we kitted it out and we just set it up in the last well, few days. That sounds very cool. Do you have a photo of it? Uh, I can you we'll get insert a photo it of right it? here. Very nice, we have now. You can see a cool photo of Murray's hamster I know, cage. Look at that. That's uh, Whoa. as I said, if I don't get the photos, this will be a, a strange segment. Yeah. <laughs> but there we go. Right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so now going back to music, what inspired you to start playing drums? I, I think I hate this, but li literally, like, my parents one day was like, Murray, <laughs> would you like to learn an instrument? Yeah. I was like, eh. And they were like, oh, if you had to, what one? Like drums you? and they were like god and damn Murray. Like, yeah they drums they were like oh. uh, could you not have said piano or, or, oh, or acoustic, acoustic guitar or something quiet like a bass <laughs> well i think that at the time we actually had an electric organ in the house oh wow none, none, none of my family do play it oh so that's a point um so so that was kind of how it all started it was just like yeah. my parents gave me an opportunity too and i picked it up and i went to lessons and i bounced around a few teachers at yeah. first and then found one that was really good. Did you ever do any grades or anything? Yeah, so I did I did grade one to grade five. Okay. And I, I did one to five and then the grading kind of series I was doing yeah, at yeah. grade six was like you have to do music theory. Oh and being a drummer who knows nothing. Yeah yeah that's annoying. <laughs> it was yeah. it's frustrating and I at the time I was quite young and I just didn't want to go through that. See, mm. I or I would have been sense. completely stumped because I don't I don't really read music that well. So I would have been I would have struggled a bit. Mm. Um, that, that's an interesting difference between like drumming and other instruments is that or at least with guitar like with guitar I think or at least from what I know it seems like most people learn it and they learn uh, tabs and this kind yeah of thing, which and to be honest the most when you're doing kind of low level gigging and stuff it's so much more important to be able to learn things by ear because mm -hmm. nine out of ten times when you're when you get a gig with a band it'll be like here's a live recording learn it and that's it. You just have to sit yeah. down and go, right, okay. okay, yeah, I've got no music, no tabs. I just have to learn from by ear. And it's a great skill to have. But oh, great, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, like with drums, you just get, sheet music is the de facto. Yeah, yeah. There, there's technically no like one unified 
sheet music for drumming. I it's almost so. just like a picture of a drum. I always found it's, it almost draws a drum kit yeah. in music notation. Well, it is weird when you look at it from the angle of like, I don't know, a classical in like instrument. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, yeah, there is some kind of pitch increase as you go up and everything and down. So, but, but it is a bit arbitrary. And like, even if you pick up uh, two drum books, they might not even notate things the same okay, way. Yeah. Which is a little bit frustrating, but yeah. it's something you learn to live with, especially when you only have like, Ten possible swatches on the stage. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, whatever. Who am um, so on that? Who inspired you the most as a kind of musician? Or oh, don't have to be as a musician, but is there mm. any kind of one person you would accredit to that? That's yeah, good question. <laughs> Again, um, you know, one day I listened to Octavarium by Dream Theater. Oh yeah, yeah. And I thought, whoa, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with the drums? And so, Port Noise definitely a kind of big. Yeah, yeah. Big, big name, I think. Are you quite, and you're quite, you don't mind uh, Mangini either, do you? No, Mangini. You're not, Mangini is very You're not a purist, no, <laughs> in no, that no. sense. I, I don't care. In fact, I would say that one of my favourite uh, Dreamster albums is, is A Distance Over Time, which came out in 2019. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. A lot of people don't like that album, but I thought, I thought it was good. I, I like I yeah. like some of the songs. So, this is the second last lockdown exercise vlog we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, we'll see you next week with my interview from Hamish that we definitely didn't film on the same day. <laughs> anyway, it's been nice chatting to you, Murray. See you All guys right. next week. Bye bye.